Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, I just think sometimes the, the cross may not have been the biggest challenge for Jesus. It was leaving heaven. It was giving up everything that He had as God. He said He didn't count it as uh, anything to be compared with God when He was here on earth. He sacrificed all of that to become a human being and then die a, a horrible human death. But that man is standing in heaven today. Yes. Amen. And we're going to see him. The day will come when we will yes. see a man. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's so easy to forget when we get, you know, I mean, I know we're not really a religious group, but it's so easy to kind of fall into that category of just making it a religious thing when it isn't. It's personal. It couldn't be more personal than to Jesus to love you so much that He died for you. Period. If you were the only one. And that's how He sees it. That He gave His life for you. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. I, uh, Jody just shared something with me a moment ago, and I'd like, it kind of goes with everything that's being said. I'd like her to go ahead and share yeah. that with all of us, if you would. So, yeah, so the other night I had this dream, and it was very distinct. And I was in a church service, and I remember a cousin of mine walking in, and I was kind of waving him over to come sit with me. And then, you know how dreams go, in a second, he's up on the altar. And his belly, it was like he didn't have a shirt on. And his belly, I could see his insides and everything. And he swallowed this light. And this light so shined from his belly. And then he was gone, and I saw him swimming in this water. Like he was like an amphibian or a fish or whatever he was, but he was just soaking in this water. So when I woke up, I asked the Lord, I'm like, what is that? I've never had such a distinct dream like that. What does that mean? And the Holy Spirit revealed to me, he goes, when you let your light so shine, springs of living water yes. flow from you. And it was just that simple. And I just thank God for that little message. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I mean, this is just what we're talking about. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not saved you know, just to go to heaven, obviously. If we were, we'd, well, our pastor used to say, they'd drown us when we were baptized. It would just be all over with, and we wouldn't have to deal with it. But there's a reason for us being here, and that is to reveal Jesus. And uh, however we do that, I mean, we're, everybody's different. Everybody has a different personality. Everybody has different circles of friends and, and influence and so forth. And that's where we do it, whether it's on the job or whether it's, you know, in your neighborhood or family or whatever it might be. It's to let that light shine. Praise the Lord. He said, it's not for us to hide it under a bushel. He gave us light. He, he is the light of the world. And he does want us to share that with everybody. Praise the Lord. That's what Christmas really is about. It's one time of the year when we can focus, when the, everybody can focus, whether they understand what they're focusing about is a whole other issue. But it is one time of the year where it's exciting. You know, I mean, it's, it's just fun to know that this thing that we're celebrating isn't just about Christmas trees and ornaments and all that, which I don't have a problem with any of it. I do as much decorating as anybody probably. But that it's all about the joy of the Lord and experiencing that and trying to, to capture that and then live it out all the other 364 days of the year. Praise the Lord. Yep. So God bless all of you. Appreciate Thanks. you being here. I am going to be very brief this morning. I need to be done at 1130 because... Now, this is all about Jesus, right? But we got little kids, right? Yeah. And they kind of like that fat guy in the red suit, yeah. praise the Lord. And that's okay. Jesus wants us to enjoy this. And if that's a way, if that is a way for the, the, to register with them, as long as we're giving them Jesus in the midst of all of this, it's a good thing. And so we want to celebrate with them. And, and uh, so we got a surprise visitor coming for the young people. And they're going to come up about 1130. So I need to... Get on with it. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. And we're not taking anything away from Jesus. This is all about Jesus. And, and each of us in, in our own way will celebrate this uh, over the next week or so. For us, it'll be the next three weeks. We've had one Christmas. We've got two to go. Amen. You know how it is when you get family and they get growing and having babies and grandbabies themselves. And so just can't get them all into one spot at the same time. Praise the Lord. But it's good. It's a lot of fun. And, and it's one time of the year when we really get to get to be together and enjoy the time. So it's, it's a fun thing. Praise the Lord. Speaking of which, uh, what do you call Santa's elves? Subordinate clauses. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mike. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, that's good. Praise. You know, you, I used to know a woman, this Sally won't be too upset with this, but she always carried a taser. Man, she was stunning. Oh, yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What did the DNA say to the other DNA? Do these genes make me look fat? <laughs> yeah. And the other thing, you know, we were talking about this, I think it was Tammy, or I can't remember now who it was, about whiteboards. They really are remarkable. <laughs> uh, well, of course they're bad. I wouldn't be telling them if they weren't. Now, when I was a kid in school, uh, I, my English teacher asked me one time, looked at me and said, uh, Nathan, name two pronouns. I said, who, me? <laughs> <laughs> pronouns, praise the Lord. All right, God bless you for being here. And that's your sacrifice for the day. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. He's good. Amen. Yeah. All right, let's, let's get right to it. It's a very simple message this morning, but uh, I think it's... It bears uh, sharing, and uh, even though it's brief, give the kids a chance to really have a little celebration here at the church as well. So I'd like to, Peter, if you would, let's, let's begin in Luke chapter. No, in fact, let's go to uh, John 3, 16 and 17. We'll read that first. John 3, 16 and 17. Praise the Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to Luke chapter 2, and we'll read verses 4 through 7. And if you're wondering why I shaved, to scare the grandkids. Some of them hadn't seen me without a beard, and they just really freaked out. The youngest, the youngest one, really, we went to a school program for Izzy, and uh, man, she didn't want any part. She, usually, she's all over me. She wants me all the time because I give her gum. Sugarless, but it's gum. But uh, yeah, she freaked out. It's kind of, it was kind of fun. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I usually do something to torment all of them, but she wasn't afraid of the moose like Clint was. I have a moose with skis and a thing, and... I'd get it out every Christmas and just freak him out because I'd make it talk. It really can't talk, but he didn't know because he wasn't old enough. So it was just me talking, but moving. And she, he was just totally paranoid of that moose. He would go anywhere near where that moose was. It's funny to him now, but it was terrifying and traumatizing to him for a number of years. But I think he'll be fine without any professional help. He seems to be coming along just fine. Praise the Lord. So Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judah under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. talking about me now. I know that because I have the Spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is that is born? 
Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. They said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called that wise men and inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared, he, said, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Praise the Lord. Now Luke chapter 2 again and verses 8 through 20. Praise the Lord. There were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Lo, the angel of the Lord came up, up, upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Praise the Lord. So have you ever had anybody uh, give you directions and, and then if they give you the directions, they say, you can't miss it. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I promise you, it's possible to miss something even when it's right smack in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. And did you know that most people miss Christmas every year. So I didn't say some people, I said most people. Praise the Lord. And I know that sounds crazy, especially in America, where Christmas advertising in the stores and on TV starts about August yeah. and just goes continually until the 25th of December. The focus is on that day, on the 25th, and yet so many people who participate in Christmas celebrations are oblivious to the reality of what it is they're actually celebrating. They're involved in a lot of activities. I'm thinking the people, the same people that are going through that house you were talking about, if they came to our house, they'd, they'd be upset as well. But I, I guarantee you they're celebrating Christmas. They're, they're exchanging gifts and got the eggnog flowing and the whole thing but they have no clue what it is they're really celebrating. Or well, they wouldn't be offended right. by somebody else who loves the Lord and, and doesn't mind sharing that with anybody and everybody. Right. So they are involved in a lot of activities, but they miss the main event, Jesus Christ himself. Amen? I heard a story, and I, I'm going to just do some little anecdotal, anecdotal things today because it's Christmas, praise the Lord, close to it anyway. And there's an old story about a country boy who wanted more than anything to see the circus. And when the circus came to town, he emptied his piggy bank and headed for town to see his first circus. That afternoon, he came home with all of his money, and his father asked him, what happened? Didn't you go to the circus? 
Oh, he said, yeah, the, the trucks were full of animals. They came right down Main Street, and I got to see it all. And it didn't cost me a thing. Nobody ever asked me for any money. And the father said, oh, son, you didn't see the circus at all. You only saw the parade. You missed the circus that you wanted to see so badly. That's Christmas to a lot of people. They think it's the parade, and they're missing what that parade is trying to bring to them. The reality of Jesus himself. So the Bible, look at, let's look at Luke 2, uh, verses 4 through 7 again. So Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. Mm -hmm. So the Bible doesn't mention him specifically. But that night, an innkeeper missed Christmas. He's standing in his door. And here's a man and his wife who's obviously full-term pregnancy. And he turned him away, said he didn't have room for him. And because of that decision, he missed Christmas. The inn was full. That means he was busy changing sheets, you know, running errands, you know, cleaning rooms, doing all the stuff that an innkeeper would do or somebody that works in a hotel or a motel, all of that. And yet he missed Christmas. He was busy. He was preoccupied and he didn't have time to help this couple. Amen. I mean, he could have found some space for him, I'm sure, inside in his own living quarters, you know, somewhere. There, there had to be a place that he could have put him. But he was busy with other things. He was busy with all the other people, the other guests that were there at the house. It was full. The, the inn was packed. Amen. And so there's a story, another story that I'm going to share with you. The story of a guy at a bus station in Athens, Georgia. He bought a ticket to Greenville, South Carolina. And the ticket clerk told him the bus was going to be running a little bit late. And so while he was waiting, he saw this machine that said, uh, or a sign on the machine said, for 25 cents, I'll tell you your name, your age, your hometown, and other interesting information. And so the guy was sure it was a scam, but his curiosity got the best of him. And he put a quarter in the machine, and a card came out and said, your name is Bill Jones. You're 35 years old. You live in Athens, Georgia, and you're wanting or you're waiting for a bus to Greenville, South Carolina. The bus is delayed. The guy was dumbfounded. How could a machine know all these specific things? Amen? And so he puts another quarter in, and a card comes out and says, as I told you before, you're Bill Jones. You're 35 years old. You live in Athens, Georgia. You're still wanting to go to Greenville, South Carolina, and the bus is still delayed. So the guy decides... This is crazy. This is nuts. It can't be. So he decides he's going to trick the machine. So he goes across the street and he buys a pair of the Groucho glasses, you know, the ones with the mustache and the big nose and everything on it, and a wig and a cane. And then he hobbles back to the station and inserts another quarter in the machine. And the card comes out and says, you're still Bill Jones. You're still 35 years old. You still live in Athens, Georgia. You still want to go to Greenville, South Carolina. The problem is while you were paying, while you were not paying attention, you missed your bus. Oh. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, I mean, here's the deal. Let's contrast the innkeeper with those who did celebrate the first Christmas. The shepherds were pretty busy too. They were occupied with their business. They had jobs to do and all that. But they were willing to lay aside even the good things that they were doing so that they could participate in this incredible ce celebration of God's birth. Matthew 2, 1 through 3. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? But we've seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, 
and all Jerusalem with him. So here's another person who missed the first Christmas. Unlike the innkeeper, he wasn't ignorant. He was well informed. He knew exactly where this was supposed to take place. Amen. He had the, the facts available to him. Verse 3 says, and it, it troubled him. It disturbed him. Amen. This king of the Jews. Amen. He didn't like the idea of any competition for his throne. If the innkeeper's problem was being sidetracked with other things, Herod's problem was being scared of what he might lose. His supremacy was being challenged. So what's that got to do with us? Herod missed Christmas because he wanted to be king. He wanted to rule his world and everybody in it. He was afraid of losing power and control. Amen. He was afraid that he wouldn't be able to dominate every situation and every circumstance the way he had. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just submitting to Jesus mm -hmm. is the best way to deal with every issue yes. you've got going on. Amen. Mm -hmm. Matthew 2, 4 through 6. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not the least among, are you not least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Mm -hmm. So the religious leaders, they missed the first Christmas too. Not because of ignorance. The chief priests and the scribes knew exactly where Jesus was going to be born. They told Herod. Yeah. They had it prophesied, amen, from Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Yep. They knew the Bible well enough. They knew the prophecies. And they knew that Christ was going to be born in Bethlehem. Yep. They knew the right answers, and they still missed Christmas. Yes. Here were Bible experts, yep. theologians, you could say. The ones with all the right answers. And yet they didn't bother to walk the few miles from Jerusalem to Bethlehem to see the Messiah had indeed been born. To me, it's just, we don't have to know everything, but we need to act on the things that we do know. Yes. There's no better time to start than Christmas. And I believe that will make this the best Christmas ever. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Luke chapter 2, 8 through 14. <clears throat> so there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Yeah. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Yeah. So let's, let's just look back at this briefly. There's really two scenes here in the Christmas story. One in the field and one at the manger. The first scene records this heavenly visitation of angels announcing the birth. And while they're announcing this birth, they're doing it with praise and with worship. The first scene records this heavenly visitation of angels announcing the birth and praising God. The second scene at the manger records an earthly response also proclaiming and praising the Lord. Luke 2, 17 through 20. When they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Praise the Lord. So it's the pattern for us today. 
we have access to both realms on earth as it is in heaven. As the shepherds heard that heavenly message, they became messengers. It wasn't enough for them just to know it and be happy about it. They couldn't help themselves but to want to share it. Luke 2, 14. The key to it all, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. Peace with God. You mean that after all my failures, all my disappointments, all my running away, all my rebellion, all my rejection, I can still be at peace with God? Yes. He's made a way for us, a way to know his favor, a way to know his grace, a way to know him. Praise the Lord. Angels praised him. Shepherds praised him. And we praise him today and every day because he came in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. Eternal security in God. We have that. No matter how much we screw up, no matter how much we run and hide and act up, we have peace with God. Eternal yes. security. Peace with God and security in God. His mercy and peace extended to us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved each and every one of us. Now I'm going to close with this last story. During World War II, General Eisenhower was in England directing the planning of the D-Day invasion. And it was during this intense preparation that word came of the death of his father. What do you do in that situation? I mean, he's planning for the biggest event since probably Jesus' birth that's going to take place on the earth. I mean, a major battle for world domination. And it was at that time, with all that pressure, he gets the message that your dad's died. Now, he's a great general, become a president, but he's a man with a family, and his father has died. So what do you do? It was impossible for Eisenhower to leave his command. He couldn't go home, but it was also impossible for him to go forward with business as usual. So what does he do? He sent everybody out of his room, out of his office, and he set aside 30 minutes to think about his dad and to write down in his diary his thoughts, the things that they had done together, the things that were important to him, the things that he had remembered about his dad and what his dad had been to him. And after a half hour, he forced himself to get back up and to go back to work. But that night, he left his office a little early and decided he would spend some more time just thinking about his dad and writing those thoughts down in a diary. That was all he could do. So as we think of Christmas this year, let's think of this. If General Eisenhower, in the middle of planning the invasion of Europe, in the greatest war that this earth has experienced, if he could shut the door and spend a half hour thinking about the death of his earthly father, isn't it possible for us to find a way to shut the door, open our Bible, and think about the birth of our Savior? Yes. Sometimes we need to meditate these things in our heart the way Mary did. Yes. Just ponder them, just think about them, just concentrate. Yes. So during this Christmas season, let's take the time to sit down and read through the Christmas story. Yes. Contemplating. Pondering, praising, worshiping, thanking God for peace and favor yes. and grace. Yes. Amen. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Good for you. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. We've got a, got a group here and...
They've got a little program for us. Praise the Lord. Let's enjoy their celebration of Christmas.
Yeah. 